Hello, guys. Welcome to Advanced Rigging 2018. Uh, actually, 2019 spring. So uh, time just flows really fast. So today, what we're gonna do is adding space control to our different um, IKFK systems uh, for the arm. Um, to start with, though, there is something we actually haven't done in the rigging class, which is we haven't got any global control yet. So we need to do that first. Uh, okay, to start with, I'm gonna go create a, a CV curve, right? Uh, make sure that it's one linear uh, here. Okay, now we can zoom in to the origin. Holding down X, go from there, go two unit, down, one unit to the right, to the left, and then go back to the center, 45 degree. Keep on going, uh, just doing the same thing until you got four arrows, right? We have done this before, so you know what I'm doing here. Uh, all right, cool. So with those created, I want to make it a little bit more, a little bit more fancier. So I'm gonna go ahead and create yet another circle here and make it big like this. And then I'm gonna go for freeze transformation and delete history, Alt Shift D. Same thing goes for the other guy. Now let me grab both, and then I can go to this uh, modeling and uh, curves. We can go for a cut that will make them cut each other. Okay, and you can see they have been broken into all those different pieces. Uh, you can also see them here now. I'm gonna grab them all again and Alt Shift D to delete their history, and then I'm gonna delete the ones I don't need. Those four corners in the middle, and those ones. And that gives me gives me uh you know this shape that I want to connect together. Okay, let me control one to isolate it. All right, how do I connect them together? Um, uh, let me turn off the grid so it's easier to see. Uh, so what I do is just grab the first one and then the next one. I'm gonna go for gonna go for curves and there is a attach. Now don't forget to change some of the settings. Uh, the default setting will be blend, which if you do that, it's going to give you a blended version of it, which I'm not really liking that. I want them to be the way they looks like. Okay. So what I do is grab both and then make sure that they're just connected and I don't really need the original ones. So check out that. Apply. Keep on doing that. You can hit, you can hit the G button to repeat the process. Oops. Grab that and the next one, G button. The last one though, if you do that right now, it's actually fun this time. <laughs> so if yours is somehow flipped, or not getting the right result, that this one is actually connected to this end, you just simply go select this curve and go for reverse direction, and it will be fun. But it seems like mine is okay this time, so I guess it's fun then. <laughs> All right, when I'm done, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold it down Alt Shift D to delete their history, and that gives me gives me a master controller. I'm gonna call this guy animation control master mover. Okay, and then let me go also create another circle in the middle, and then I'm gonna make it bigger. Right, okay. uh, this is gonna be called AC um, master offset. All right, Alt Shift D to delete the history. Now I have two curves, and just like just like usual, I'm gonna give them groups. Right, Control G, and Control G, and just name the group as usual. Just add GRP on the very end of the naming. Although this is not super necessary because they're all at the origin. Uh, I don't think I need a protection group for the values. But still, this is pretty common in real practice. I'm going to drag the offset to the master mover. Oops. Uh, yeah, to the master mover. So what we got is this, this very simple FK system. All right. Now let me take a look at everything. You can see they're too small. So I'm going to go to the component mode and grab all the vertices and scale them up. All right, cool. So now they're not doing anything. To make them do something, we just need to put them into the Sophia Rig group, and we just use it to control the span module. So grab the the offset controller and then the span rig group. 
we can do a rigging constraint parent constraint scale to make it completely follow. Now if I go back to object mode, I can then grab the controllers to control, right? Cool. All right, so what's next? Well, to make space control, we kind of need to decide how many uh, different spaces we want the FK arm to follow. For now, it just follows FK, so it's going to follow the clavicle, and clavicle will follow the chest kind of thing, right? So that's what's happening here now. Um, but uh, sometimes, actually a lot of times, you kind of want the arm to not move or to not rotate uh, when you rotate the clavicle. You kind of want it to be like this, right? Um, to do that, we kind of need to make it follow different parts of the body and uh, not following others. Uh, to do that, we need to create some locators to help us to do the input control of this controller. So I'm going to go ahead and do a locator here. I'll call this guy lock left um, arm fk space um, and then I can name it clavicle. Uh, so that this one is specifically serving the purpose to make it follow the clavicle control. Control D to duplicate it, I can name this guy uh, span to make it follow the span or basically the, the chest when I rotate the chest. Okay, and moving on, we can keep duplicating this t two more times. And this one will be the pelvis, or you can also call it COG as center of gravity. And eventually the uh, uh, the word. Right. That's the four spaces we can do. Okay. All right. When we're done with that, we need to match those locators to the controller. Okay. So what we do is just isolate these guys, grab the clavicle and then the controller of the FK shoulder. We do a match all transform to match it there. And just keep doing that until all the locators are matched to the shoulder controller. So they're not at the origin anymore. They are now exactly the same location where the uh, the FK controller is. Now let me grab that controller. Now because we want to animate this guy, so we don't want to occupy any channel here. We can of course do that on the shoulder group, but it's occupied with other values already. So it will be easier to have a extra group to do that job for us. So let me group that FK shoulder here. And we can call this guy uh, space uh, grp, right? That's for the space switch. All right. Then afterwards, we can just grab these guys and control G to group it. And we can call this guy, um, uh, if I can copy one of the names, grp. Right, the arm FK space GRP, and that can be fall into the arm rig group. Okay, so it's here. All right, so what do we do with these guys? Um, so this is the shoulder space group we just created, and this, those are the locators we created. And what we do is just grab all the locators and that space group, we do a constraint. What constraint do you think it is? Uh, give it a minute. Okay, it's going to be the orange constraint. Okay, uh, the reason why it's orange constraint is because uh, the FK only rotates, right? The movement doesn't really concern it, so we use uh, orange constraint. And think about what we do with IK, and it's going to be different. Anyway, so let's focus on the FK now. So we have the locators now, and they are having constraint on the group of the FK controller. If you go ahead and try to move the controllers now, you can see they are not quite following at all because now the locators are taking full control of the FK, none of our other controllers are able to move the FK arm. Okay. Now, of course, this is not what we want. We want different controllers to have control if we wanted to do that. Uh, and uh, that requires us to have a attribute on the controller here uh, to give us a list to choose which one do we want to switch to. All right, to do that, let's just grab the FK shoulder and go add attribute, right? And then we can just add 
a enum here. Make sure that make sure that it's enum. Default setting is float. Change that to enum. Can call this guy parent. That's pretty common in most of the rigs, and sometimes people call that space switch, whatever, but parent is totally fine. And we can go to the enum names and change the first one from green to clavicle. The second one will be the span. And moving on to the third one, you can click on that empty space. This is going to give you a new one, and you can call this guy as pelvis, right? And then eventually the last one will be the word. You can add new one if you see fit. Okay, but those are the ones that, and I think minimum is very needed. Uh, uh, at minimum, okay, so I'm going to add those guys. Okay. So we have all those four different options. And uh, when I have clavicle, uh, I kind of want the clavicle controller to be able to control the FK. So FK will rotate with the clavicle controller. And because the clavicle controller is the child of the other systems, it's going to follow everything else also. But if I switch this parent to word, then clavicle will not be able to rotate it. But for now, we just added those new attributes. They're not doing anything yet. And now that all controllers are having any control to the locator, which are currently not doing that input for the uh, space group. So first step, what we need to do is make the controls to control the locators. And there are other options, like use the binding joint. Okay. It's your choice to either use the, use the binding joint or the, the controllers. I would like to use the binding joint because that's the one eventually drives the movement of the body. So let me select the root joint and then the locators, right? Control 1 to isolate. Uh, what I do here is just grab the clavicle joints and control click on the clavicle locator. Uh, right, I'm going to do a parent constraint, make sure that you use the default setting so that it does have maintain offset. They're not at the same location. Okay. Moving on to the next, I'm going to use the chest joint or the last joint on the span actually to control the span locator by using again a parent constraint. Moving on to the pelvis, pelvis will be this guy, right? This guy will do pel pelvis control. Okay, G button to repeat parent constraint. And eventually the word will be the global control here, the last one we, uh, you know, the new one we created. Uh, and this bigger one will do the parent constraint on the word. So constraint, all right. Now notice that we have this offset. So this one is not being able to rotate the arm if you wanted to do that. Uh, so that's why this one is useful. Anyway, um, so we have all those locator now being controlled by those joints. Now you, you can see if I rotate the clavicle, the clavicle actually rotated this guy a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit, okay? Um, because it does actually have uh, a quarter of the inputs uh, because of the constraint we did here that they all have one. Right, so, so again, the control flow is that the joint will have constraint on the locator, the locator have constraint on the group of the controller, which will make the controller follow. Um, now the last step we have to do then is we want to then say, okay, uh, I want to use my parent attribute here to actually change those weightings so that when I'm in clavicle, I want this one to be having a weighting of one and the others will be zero, right? And I guess you have some idea already in mind to make that connection. Uh, my my way here will be a uh, side driving key. So I'm gonna grab the orange constraint here and do a animation, right? Key, side driving key set. The driver will be the controller. And the driver attribute will be parent. The driven attribute will be these guys. Okay. Now let me go here and switch the values to zero for the other three, leaving the cla the clavicle to be one because here the setting is clavicle, right? And again, let me select all these attributes that I want to make associations, right? And then key it. 
All right. Now if I go ahead and switch it to span, I need to change the span to one and the others to zero, and do another key, and just keep on going to pelvis, and the pelvis will be one, and this one will be zero. Key it, and then eventually to the word, and this guy will be one, and that's gonna be zero. Right, and key it. All right, so when I switch those values now, those weightings will be changing so that only one of them will be one and the others will be zero. All right, and if I'm now in word mode, that means the weighting of the word is now one. If I'm in the span, you can see the weighting of the span is one. Okay, all right, let's test it. So now I'm in span mode, meaning that the clavicle should not be able to control it. Let's try that. You can see now the clavicle is not controlling it. However, the span is able to control it, right? Because it's parented to the span, as you can see here. Okay. Now if we change it to something even higher, like the pelvis, and you try the span, you can see span are now no longer able to change it. Okay, change the rotation. Um, but the pelvis is able to do that. Okay, uh, it's able to do that here too, which is not actually not very good. <laughs> uh, we should actually use this uh, this controller then instead of that. Okay, we should actually go ahead and change that. Um, uh, so what we can do here is go to the node editor. Okay, and uh, the edit. so what we can do is we can grab that. Uh, or in console we did, right? And one of them are coming the coming from the pelvis. I'm using the pel pelvis joints, which is not a very good idea in this case. Okay, so I'm gonna go for the node editor here. Uh, if I can open that, okay, and show the input and output of this. You can see now we do have the constraints here. The locator is the pelvis, and it's going to be parent constraint by the root. I'm going to delete that parent constraint. And instead, I'm going to use uh, the actual pelvis controller. <laughs> that that will be actually a better idea here. All right, constraint parent. OK, that should prevent this guy from doing that. OK, uh, but this guy is able to do that. Meanwhile, the uh, the chest and the, cla uh, the the clavicle are not being able to do that. So you want to be sure that you're selecting the right input for these guys. And you can see now because it's just this part we have to fix, it's not that difficult to change it. Uh, to change it. All right, so that's basically it. That's the space switching for the FK system. You have four different options. All right, cool. So this is going to be it for this video. Next video, we're going to talk about how we do IK. And in between the videos, I'm going to give you a little challenge. Before you open the next video, try to do the IK control yourself and see what kind of a space you need. It's not going to be the same as FK, because um, there are different situations that you want the IK to follow different part of the body, not just that the IK is following. Okay. All right, so give that a go and see if you can come up with the correct results. And then when you're done, then you can move on to the next video and see how I do these things. Okay, see you next time.